Maybe you want to use this as the ultimate tailgating setup. Well, look no further. We got our TV plugged in, powered on. Hey everyone, today in this video, I'm gonna be checking out the EcoFlow River 2 Portable Power Station. I did receive this sample to review, but I want you to know that any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this product or you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. Take a look at the retail box and packaging. Everything looks great. We have a nice product image on the front. And on the very back, you can learn more about this particular power station. You'll see some key settings also on the side of the packaging. Now let's go ahead, let's open it up and see what's inside. Here are all the contents. First up, we have our product literature consisting of our quick start guide with detailed information about your new portable power bank. Different details, how to use the menu settings, what's in the box. You'll see on the back side too, they have different charging scenarios for you. Moving right along, we have our disclaimer and safety information in multiple languages. You'll see we have some tech specs here. Feel free to pause to review them. If you're wondering about the battery, it's showing after 3,000 cycles, the remaining capacity is still more than 80%. Five-year warranty information. Next, we have some of our power cables right here. Lastly, we have the portable power bank. Let's look at that in more detail. Looking at the unit from the top, you'll see we have this nice almost indented tray so we can set something on here with that slight lip to it. Really large grip handle, easy to carry and move this unit around. Now we'll look at it from the front. You'll see we have the EcoFlow logo and branding, our AC and DC sides with our on and off buttons. We can pop this cap off to remove the protective cover. If we want to use that port. You'll see our display front and center, two USB A's, one USB C, and our gold power button. Here's a quick peek at the side profile with a caution sticker. Let's look at the other side right there. It's identical without that sticker. Now we're looking at the very back. We have our charging options here, two different routes you can go depending on what you want to do. And we have our additional product information. And we'll look at it from the very bottom. You'll see four nice grip feet here, giving us just great traction on the bottom of any flat surface. Now let's go ahead, let's power this on and try it out. All right, we got the unit plugged in, powered on. I connected a couple of different devices. Right out of the box, we have not charged this unit up. We're showing 28% battery life. I really like this display. We can see our input, our output, and our hours left. Currently, we have five hours left at 28% with our current situation, which is charging via USB Type-C, this iPhone. So we got our iPhone plugged in and charging. Both of these devices were already dead and you'll see they're charging here. Google Pixel 6 Pro and we got our Apple iPhone. So both of those devices there plugged in charging right now. And then you'll see we have an air purifier plugged into our AC port. I wanted to discuss the output specs for each of these ports. So USB type A per the user guide, we're showing five volts at 2.4 amps, 12 watt max per port. And we have two USB type A ports. For USB type C, we're showing 5, 9, 12, 15, or 20 volts at 3 amps, 60 watt max. For the AC, if you're wondering, 300 watt total, 600 watt peak, 120 volt, 50, 60 hertz. So that's what we're getting there with our ports. The DC port, if you're wondering, 12.6 volt at 8 amps, 100 watt max right there. But we have it powered on. Everything's working great so far. Both of our phones are charging as we would expect, but I wanted to show you our air purifier here. And I just turned it on and we have our max fan speed setting here. And that's working great. You'll notice now we're down to three hours and our input output again, now we're showing 37 watts for our output right now. And that's bringing our total down to less than, or I should say right at one hour right there. So we're dropping pretty quickly as we're consuming more wattage with our output. Holding steady right around 36. Let's go to one. We'll see if that changes anything. Now we've dropped down. Super fascinating. So we're at our six watt output. Battery percentage is still held to a steady. Now it just declined 1%. That took a while. I'm impressed with that. And we just went back up. It's climbing two hours. Let's turn that off again and let's see our output. 
what's going to change, if anything. So now we went up to three hours. So again, you'll get that real time indicator right there. Now we're back to our five hours and let's boot it back up. Initial startup jumped us to 24 and it's back down to six. We're at three. So just keep in mind your results will vary depending on what you have plugged in powered on, things like that. How could I forget about tailgating? Maybe you want to use this as the ultimate tailgating setup. Well, look no further. We got our TV plugged in, powered on. Sorry, it's currently conducting a factory reset. Our output's at 2122 watts. No issues at all right there. So you can get really creative with how you want to use this and what devices you want to power. But wait, there's more. You can use this with solar panels. So in this case, we have the EcoFlow 220 watt solar panels here. This is actually overkill because the unit that we have, the River 2, only supports up to 110 watts for our input. But you'll see right there, sure enough, look at that. If you can focus in, our input's currently right at that 110 watt mark, 39%. Now it's changed to recharging time, so one hour at 40%, getting our 110 watts right there. Super simple to set up. Again, we just plugged in the solar panels to the back right there with this positive negative splitter cable here. Red's positive, black is gonna be your negative. So connect those to your solar panels. Ours were even labeled for us. Positive to positive, negative to negative. It's just that simple. These panels are cool too because with the design of its carrying case and it's the stand, we have room in here we could tuck this unit and the cables you know, out of the way. So pretty neat, very simple setup. Plug one cable in, connect your solar panel, in our case, two additional cables and that's it. We're enjoying a really bright sunny day here with these panels, getting our 110 watts, which is the max of our portable power bank. Really quick, I wanted to interject based off of my charging experience where we went 27% up in charge in 43 minutes, getting 110 watts for our power input from our solar panel. That math turns out to be 0.62% per minute to charge at your 110 watts. So if we factor that from zero to 100%, that would take us 2.7 hours to fully charge this device. Now results will vary depending on the sun, the position, all of that good stuff. But when they say around three hours, if you can maximize that 110 watt capacity input with your solar panel, you should be well within that range. So now after using the River 2, let me share with you my final thoughts. Besides all the same stuff I'm always gonna have for a piece of tech like this, more ports, faster charging times, all of that good stuff, with this particular unit, I really feel like there was a missed opportunity to put a built-in wireless charger up at the top. I would love to see something like that added to this in the future. And I really wish it supported more than 110 watt input, especially because we have a 220 watt solar panel. So it'd be nice to take advantage of that larger panel. Now, the good news is that's kind of a moot point because you can buy other EcoFlow units that do support that. This is gonna be a smaller unit for a smaller scale. But again, just something to keep in mind, I'd like to see that trickle down even to this particular unit to give us that increased power input. Obviously, I want better output as well for everything here, more ports, wireless charging, all that good stuff. But again, that's going to be very consistent regardless of the power station. We're always going to want more as a consumer.